Hey everyone, it's Jim from Vows and More, an online vintage tube store. And today, in tube lab number 64, we're going to take a look at phase inversion on the scope. But first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. So, last week I talked a bit about balanced and unbalanced circuits, and of course the subject of an inverted signal came up. And that got me thinking, maybe it would be a lot easier to understand if you could see it on the scope. So let's do that. Okay, so we're going to use the URI kit amp. This is actually kit amp number one. I use this, this is the test, this is, this is the build. I used to make the um, the kit build series for for the Erie. Okay, so let's have a look here and see what we're up to. And let's just get this amp on. So here's your RCA input, and I'm going to have a one kilohertz one volt signal input here. Now one kilohertz is the top of the mid-range or let's say the very beginning of the treble. So it's going to come on here and here's our signal right here. I'm already clipped on to the RCA input right here. So there's our signal. I can just unclip and there you go, you go flat. Okay, so there we go, we're on. Now, where would be a good place to probe? So that signal comes into the grid of the driver tube, the, the first tube, V1, which is the 2C22. It's got a whole bunch of names, CV6. And uh, it's kind of an interesting tube. It's got two top caps, one for the grid input, and one for the plate connection, the high voltage connection. So let's connect up on the on the output where we take the gain of this tube. This is a gain stage, a voltage gain stage. Let's clip on here and see what we get. Well, we're just going to probe. Okay, so the yellow trace is our input signal. That's, in fact, let's just zoom in a little bit more so you can see, you don't need to see me tracing, but you need to see the scope. So there's our yellow signal, that's our input. Here's the output Let's turn that down. There's the output. We notice we've got higher gain. You can see over here our volts are, I don't know if you can see this side, volts RMS on the input is 350 volts is what it's reading. I'm, I'm inputting one volt peak to peak and you can see that I don't have it registering. Peak to peak's always going to register much higher than volts RMS. Volts RMS is what we work with. That's your working voltage. That's the usable portion. So here we go. And um, volts RMS after the gain is 4.18 volts. So it's substantially higher. Now, what's next? Well, why don't we probe the other side of the coupling capacitor? The coupling capacitor blocks the high voltage that's present here that powers up V1, and it just allows this AC signal to come through. So let's see if it's still inverted on the other side. It should be, shouldn't it? But we can probe around. There it is. It's still inverted, and it's still at the same strength. We knew that, but it's handy to have a peek. Okay. What about the signal coming off of the plate of our power tube, the lovely 6P7S? This is, this is one amazing sounding power tube. Part of the reason it sounds so great, this is a beam powered tetrode. And one of the reasons it sounds so great, I believe, is because I permanently strapped it in triode mode. And let's jump onto that plate connection. So that's over here. And let's turn it down. 
Okay, notice how we've got a lot of gain coming off of the plate of our power chute. But the phase inverted again, right? Because we took the signal off the plate. The phase is time aligned. You can see here the peaks and peaks are aligned. Okay, excellent. Okay, let's move a little further along in the circuit. So this is the primary side of the output transformer right here. What about the secondary side? What happens? Are we going to stay in phase or are we going to invert? Let's see. Let's just jump in there and see what happens. So this is the speaker positive terminal. Ah, look at that. It, it looks like we don't have any signal. Ah, you can see there's a little bit of a signal present. Let's turn it up so you can see it. So we stay aligned and our phase is phase aligned as well. If we had a phase shift in this circuit, what you would see is the input signal, the yellow, and the green, which is the output signal, would actually shift. One of them would shift, and depending on how far it shifts, would depend on the degree of shift. So what's going on here? How come we had such a low voltage at the output? Let's go back. I'm just going to perch my probe there. Let's go back and look at this. So on this side here, the primary side of the output transformer, we've got high impedance, high voltage, and lots of current potential. This is a power tube. This is a voltage gain tube over here, the driver tube. This is a current driving tube, not a voltage gain tube. What happens on the secondary side is we we take that high voltage, high impedance, and it drops down to very low impedance for a 4 ohm or 8 ohm tap, right? That's low impedance. High current capabilities and low voltage. And that's a good thing because our transducer, otherwise known as a speaker, needs high current to push it. It doesn't need high voltage. And on top of that, if we had, let's say, 8 or 10 or 12 feet of speaker wire running 305 volts, that wouldn't be very safe, would it? <laughs> Especially the way some of us wired up our speakers when we were kids. <laughs> there would be a lot fewer audio files around today. So that's, in essence, what's happening here at this transformer. It transformed our high voltage, high impedance to low voltage, low impedance, high current. Okay, so I hope that helped everybody understand a little bit more about how tubes flip the phases and how a basic um, power amplifier like the URI works. Okay, let's just turn off the power so we don't have high voltage present in the work area. What's been going on over at Melotone Kits? Well, lots. I spent the week pulling parts for the first E80CC kit amps, which will ship to test builders shortly. I've actually got a few left, and I've got one available for a novice builder, and I think two available for more experienced builders. You, you just need to have a little bit of experience soldering and know how to already own, how, already know how to use a volt ohm meter. I was hoping to get the uh, E80CC kits out before Christmas, but I'm waiting on 500 feet of heat shrink. It's cleared customs. It's going to be here any day, but, you know, the holidays are going to intervene. I was hoping today I could get them out, but anyways. Let's take a look, though. The build series has started, and let's take a look at what we've come up with so far. Well, we did the introduction, and we've already built the um, power supply boards. Let's have a look at them here. So this is how they actually sit in the chassis. The E80CC is a dual mono preamp, so it's got two separate power supplies. In fact, after the, um, the dual secondary windings of the power transformer, it becomes basically two preamps inside one chassis. And what that gives us is an amazing stereo separation and with a great stereo separation, you're going to have a lovely soundstage. 
So have a look at these boards. They're really well designed. They're, they're a snap to build. I used to build on proto boards when I was building prototypes. And let me just grab a proto board for you so you can see, just in case you don't know what one is. Some people call these perf boards. I call them proto boards. Um, and they're really handy, but they're nowhere near quick to, to, to build on. These, these are all labeled. Every, you know where everything goes. They're actually dual sided. So this and this, the side A and side B are the same board. All you do is you switch, flip it over. There's side B here. Ah, there's another side B. And the reason I did that is because we want a mirror image inside the amp. I wanted all of the connections, the key connections that come up the middle of the top plate. I wanted them uh, right in the middle. I did not want to have to run one set of wires all the way over to the other side. And this, I haven't seen this done very commonly at all, if at all. Uh, it's, it takes a little bit of work to figure out how to do it, but once you get it, if you if your boards are symmetrical, it's quite easy to do. And my son Charles did the design work, and he did an absolutely brilliant job laying these things out and labeling them so that even beginners could figure out where the heck everything goes. And if you're an experienced builder, of course, they go together in a snap. It's, it's almost not fun, and they go together so fast. <laughs> okay, let's take a look and see what came in this week. It's been It has been slow for much of December, but this week, stuff came in. Have a look at these. These are one of my favorite vintage EL34s. They're RFTs made in the former East Germany, or DDR, and they're not the easiest tubes to identify. A lot of tubes will have this punched rivet. They're not pretty looking. Um, there's nothing sexy about rivets. I much prefer a welded plate. But, and most, most EL34s will have a big halo getter and, let me see if we can get it there, there you can see it now, and some shields. So here are the identifiers to let you know that you've got a real vintage EL34, a real vintage RFT. You've got a molded glass with a dimple in the top. They all have the dimple. Some of them are a little smaller, some are a little more, uh, a little bigger, it depends on you know, the production run. There you can see it quite clearly. And down here, let me grab my pointer. Down here, this is the real identifier. You see this, this extra ring of plastic helping to support, perhaps, the pin. And that, I've never seen that on another EL34. I've only seen this on, a, on an RFT. There probably is an EL34 out with something like this, but this is a good identifier to help you uh, confirm that in fact you've got an RFT. These are amazing sounding tubes. They're they're very clean, clear sounding tubes with very low distortion, and the they still have you know with with low distortion and low noise, um, you get excellent detail. And with excellent detail, you almost always get a good stereo image and um, and a good sound stage. Detail is really important to getting a good sound stage. You lose, to get all of that, you lose some of the warmth. So it's not as warm as a, as a Svetlana or a vintage Mullard. But on the other hand, uh, those tubes aren't as clean and clear sounding as the RFT. Uh, you know, everything in audio is a trade-off. In some systems, and, and for some people's tastes, this will be the best EO34 they've ever heard. For people who are more familiar with a very warm sound and that's what they like, they're probably going to prefer the Mullards. Okay, what else came in? Oh, a whole case of 6P7Ss. This is the Russian Cyrillic 6N or Pi 7C. Can you see that? These are all 1980 and um, we were just looking at these in um, on our schematic, and there's your there's your high voltage, your your plate connection at the top, and these these have proven to be the most reliable power tube I've ever tested. Uh, I've almost never lost any. I I've brought in hundreds of these now, and I've I've lost one or two in transit, though not that many, 
and I've not lost a single one on the tester, I don't think, and I haven't for sure lost a single one uh, testing on the URI. And I've, you know, I've used them um, on the bench while I'm doing bench testing. I've had them upside down. I'm leaning on one right now, which maybe isn't so smart, but anyways. And they're just really solid tubes. And you wouldn't think so with the big, you know, ST, the shoulder uh, type tube. Um, you would think that this would actually be a fairly delicate tube, but no, they're, they're a really rock solid power tube. What else came in? Oh, look at these. Talking about big <laughs> and rock solid. <laughs> this is the military version of the 211, the VT4. This is the C, C type. This is the common type. I don't even know if there were production A and B types. These are these are broadcast tubes or transmitter tubes, and they are just massive. And they're four pin. They take the jumbo socket, and the um, they the normally they're in use. They weren't designed to be strapped or run in a triode mode. Sorry, they are triodes, so you don't have to strap them. Run in triode mode, uh, but you can. And I think you can get 20 or 25 watts RMS out of each of these tubes in uh, Class A, um, which is amazing. <laughs> but to do that, you got to bring the plate current, or sorry, the plate voltage, all the way up to uh, something like a thousand volts. And so to test them, I've got to try to get them somewhere close to a thousand volts. I think I can get them on to the tester at about 750 easily without too much work. So one of my projects over the holidays is to build the um, the additional unit for my power tube matcher tester, so that I can actually get these on and get get. I have quite a collection of these now. Get them tested. See how many are good. Okay. Well, that was fun. And if you stayed till the very end, here's some discount codes to help you out. Remember, I've got flat rate shipping around the world of $20. And if your order's $150 or more after discount, the shipping's on me, folks. Stay safe, everyone. This is Jim from Valves and More signing off. Cheers, everyone.